Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over macros, macro pages, and the PreSonus Exchange. You've probably seen in some of my previous videos that macros are a very powerful tool. They allow us to do multiple commands with either a keyboard shortcut, clicking it within the macro organizer, or using the macro toolbar, we can easily access all of these macros. The macro toolbar has different pages, and PreSonus has a lot of buttons and functions available on these different pages, but you can also create your own. And later on, I'll show you how you can download some pre-made ones in the PreSonus Exchange. So let's dive into the DIW and take a look. So here we are inside of our session, and you can see I don't have anything open right now other than this little drum loop, which is from my previous video. First, let's go over a few key terms. A macro is a series of commands you want Studio One or any application, but we're talking Studio One. It's a series of commands that you want Studio One to perform at one time. You can do this a lot and have that series of events happen multiple times. Let's just see what I mean. I am gonna open up the macro toolbar and I'm gonna go to the macro organizer. We're gonna just navigate to cut to cursor and edit so we can view what happens with this macro. And it has three commands in it. Split at cursor, move to the previous event, and then delete. That is the series of events that the macro cut to cursor will do. And in Studio One, you can create and customize these macros to your liking. Next, let's talk about macro toolbars. Like we said, we opened up our toolbar by hitting this button on top, and this area here is now our macro toolbar. It's the area on top that occupies buttons that are linked to macros and allow us quick and easy access to click on to perform that macro. Also in the toolbar is the drop down menu over here, which is different sets of toolbars. Right now we're in audio editing and it has select macros in this one. If we change over to global, it now has different macros that we can use. Now you have the choice of actually editing the macro toolbars and the ones that Studio One has already given you, or you can create your own toolbars. And it's a pretty simple process. While I have the toolbar open, I can right click over here where it says global. If I wanted to, I could rename this, but really what I want to do is create a new page. Creating a new page gives me a blank slate and a default name. We'll just call this Tim's toolbar, just to give it a name. Now what we can do with new group that is a section of macros. If you have a bunch that you want to categorize together, you can put them in a group. Again, you come over here, right click, and you can name that group. Let's say this is for editing. So now you can see we have renamed it to edits, but we don't have anywhere to click. It's because we need a new button. We can add in a button, right click on it, name it, and now what we need to do is actually assign this button to a macro. We've named it Expands Layers, so let's go ahead and assign it to that. When we go to Assign, we can come over here and instantly here create our new macro, or if you already have a bunch available to you, including the ones that Studio One has provided, it's in this menu. And you can scroll up and down, find the exact one you need, and associate it with the button you just created. I found one of the macros and I renamed the button real quick. But you can see it fills in the text right in the button. It's not gonna do anything right now because the data zoom is actually for waveforms where you can actually increase or decrease the height of the waveforms. That's usually what happens down here with this slider here is your data zoom. And thanks to our good friend Marcus Huskins, he actually uses this macro and I borrowed it from him. But this is how you would go about creating your own macro page, filling it with all of the macros that you use all of the time. Maybe you don't have them bound to keyboard shortcuts and you prefer clicking on them. That's fine, you can do that here. Within here, you can also put in icons. So if you have images of maybe a plugin that you wanna insert, because that's your macro of inserting a plugin, you can put those icons here and it'll show a miniature version of a still image. But maybe you're saying to yourself, you know, that's cool to know, but 
I don't have the time to sit around, create all of these toolbars on my own. I know that there's some guys out there that already have some, and I just want theirs. Well, that's where PreSonus Exchange comes into play. If you open up your browser and you navigate to cloud, here's your PreSonus Exchange. You can sign in, and in here, if you navigate down, you can find macro pages, or you can find macros. Again, macros are the series of commands that you want Studio One to do. And macro pages are just like we created. It is the toolbar or the page within the toolbar of those macros. So if we go into macro pages, you can scroll through and find whatever you like. And now there's a lot that have very similar names, yes. But as you go deeper and deeper, you can find maybe something you're looking for. So what we'll do is we'll actually scroll down to workflow. And look at this, my good buddy, Johnny Guy, here's the HST power toolbar. And all I need to do is come down here and hit install. It'll start downloading and it'll work on installing it. And instantaneously, you saw it happen. It populated the HST power toolbar right into my version of Studio One. This is something that Johnny has added to the PreSonus Exchange, and inside Studio One, I was able to sign into the Exchange, find what I was looking for, and install it. And it happened very fast. So there you go, that's an overview of what macros, macro pages, and how we can find pre-made macro pages and macros in the PreSonus Exchange. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.